We're going to wrap up now with Muhammad's death. Tugenda kati kumaliriza nokufa kwa Muhammad. Muhammad eventually was on his deathbed from the effects of this poison. Ulokubanti omusajjo ono yali awereddu obutwa mujukira omwana gwendiga gobali bocheza yalira mu obutwa. Kati nabanga yatekewa ku kitanda nga atuse ku kisere kyokufa. On his deathbed Muhammad ordered that the Muslims drive all Christians and Jews completely off the entire Arabian Peninsula. Eranga ali ku kitanda unga anatira okufa. Ebigambo byasemba yebimu okuogera yalagira na gamba buli mukrista ayo yinna ali mu matwalege Arabia yinna ba mugobe ba mufulumye obano ku musanyo ba musanyeo. So on his deathbed he's almost dead he asks for some writing materials be brought to him. Era uliriza unga anatero kufa na gamba ba muletere yo koku bintu ebimu kubiwandikidwa babirete. Now the Meccans were used to being the most powerful wealthiest people in the whole region. Mujukire eri muntandi kweranga batu gamba abantu ba Makka bo bali bamanyidwa nga bibasingo kubana amanyi era secho chokka atenga bibasajja abagagge nyinyi ni dala. Now they were Muslims but they intended to maintain their power within this new tribe of Muslims. Nenga ulirizera bali bachuse nga bafusa abayislam nenga bagamba nedda katusigale na amanyi gafe nengeri ya fiji twatambuliranga mwedda nedda and so the meccans were afraid that muhammad was going to name a successor that they didn't like era abantu ba makkabo batu kali kisera ne bambali ntisa nenge ntisa ene zirwachi nti muhammad waba wakufa agenda kubaletira omukisa omusika gubali batayagala they were afraid muhammad was going to name ali his son in law as his successor era okutia kwabe kwajja nti muhammad agenda kudira ali ali mumujukira kizibwewe oyirichizibwewe ali yogerira yogerira aishi ebigambo nganti gubagenda okufura omusika kati nichirete ntisa ali was not from their tribe Uliza ali ono yali tava mugwanga lyabwe and they wanted someone from their own tribe to be the new leader of the muslims eranga bo bali bagalira dalala omuntu avira dalala mugwanga lyabwe yababera omukulembeze wo islam so they pretended that they did not hear muhammad ask for something to write with ulokubanti omusajjo ono yali ali ku ali ku kitanda ayongo beredde obulwadde bumu balembiriza agenda kufa uliwe newe ya saba mulete ebintu tuzobolo kuwandika bibereke biwandikibwa boba yabuza abuza ne baga tetulide ne bebuza abuza nga batawulide and so muhammad died without naming a successor ile kisera kyatu ka muhammad nafa nengo musika tamwatu do batamwogedde so the battle within the community for who's going to be the successor to Muhammad is the origin of the Sunni Shiite split in Islam kati olutalo wano we rutani ko kumeruka olutalo olwani agendo kubera omusika wa Muhammad wakati mu bobo nga aba abasiram yikwe kuzala aba Sunni na aba Shia the Shiites believed that the successor to Muhammad had to be from his bloodline. Abashi yabo bakiriza bati. Nti eyandi baddo musika wa Muhammad yali ayino kubanga ava mu Musai, mu Musai gwa Muhammad yogo. Because the leader of the Muslim community is not only a political leader but a spiritual leader. Ino ino kuchitegera nti omukulembeze wo Islam si yenga yenti aino kubanti mukulembeze wa wa ya bufuzi ati ye mukulembeze wa bwe byomyoyo byomoyo and they believed that this spiritual quality of leadership would be passed through Muhammad's bloodline iranga bo balu zabati nti obukulembeze buno obwomoyo bwino kubanga butu alibwo yo yenyini nyini avira dala mulunyiriri oba mu musayi gwe nyini nyini mu Muhammad gwa avira mu dala The Sunnis on the other hand believed 
there could be no successor to Muhammad's spiritual leadership. And they believed that the successor was only a political leader. So this is the nature of the debate between the Sunnis and the Shiites. So the Shiites, of course they weren't called Shiites at the time, that was a name that came later. They wanted Ali, Muhammad's son-in-law. The Sunnis wanted Abu Bakr because he was of their tribe. And remember, Aisha was Abu Bakr's daughter. Mujukire Aisha Mwalawa Abu Baka. And remember that Aisha was very angry at Ali over that controversy about whether Aisha had misbehaved with that young man. Mujukire Aisha Yagano Kusonywa Ali Kubanga Alioyu Yasingo Ksasa Nyevigamu Evigamanti Yevakani Kalyaka Vuvuka Ngabama Zoku Valika Eri Mudungu. So Aisha was very active in trying to defeat Ali's candidacy to be the successor. Ali so Abu Bakr became the first successor to Muhammad. So when Muhammad died, many of the tribes who had converted to Islam fell away. They thought we only converted to loyalty to Muhammad, that's all. Now that Muhammad's dead, we're free to go our own way again. Some of the tribes were okay remaining Muslim, but they no longer wanted to pay taxes to these people in Medina. So Abu Bakr led the Muslim armies to go reconquer these tribes for Islam. And so these wars became known as the Rida wars. And Rida All of his wives? Mm, the children. Yes, the, he had a number of children. The wives um, actually we're going to talk about the wives in a little while when we talk about the Quran but I will tell you now I'm sorry I'm just going and <laughs> so the wives 
So at one time, some of the Muslims were talking about which wives of Muhammad they wanted to marry once Muhammad died. Now you can imagine as any husband would be Muhammad did not like that talk at all. So what do you think happened? A revelation came down. And the revelation said no one can marry any of the prophet's wives once the prophet dies. We actually don't know much about what became of the wives except for Aisha. As we move forward in Islamic history, Aisha has a very active role. But we're not going to go into that continuing history. We have enough uh, as it is now. What we do want to mention is these Rida wars, the Muslims reconquered all the tribes of the Arabian Peninsula for Islam. They also conquered other distant tribes who had never been Muslim to begin with. So when they encountered these tribes, including Jews and Christians, they would be told, we're going to destroy you. And we're going to rape all your women after you're dead. Or you can convert to Islam. And in most cases, they were able to defeat these tribes very easily. But there was one particular battle that was very difficult for the Muslims, and we're going to talk about that one a little bit later. So Muhammad died in the year 632. And the successors to Muhammad are called Khalifas. Khalifa. So here are pictures. Well, you can't see them very well, but these are the first four 
successors ah. to Muhammad. Bagire muko wali light ya wali kendere muko. Ah, so look lab. Abamu beba na abana beba ba kalifa abasoka abasoka abana. Abu Bakr only lived two years. Abu Bakr anga ye yabera o just way yabera o miyake vidi joka. Umar followed Abu Bakr and he lived another 10 years as e, Khalifa. Abu Bakr we yafa mu mwaka gwa bisatu asatu munya au Umar we yatandikira bisatu asatu munya paka ku ku ruka sorry rukaga asatu munya ku rukaga ana munya. And then we have Uthman and then finally Ali comes back in the picture as the fourth Khalifa. Uliriza wanonga uma mazo kufatula tufuna Uthman ate Uthman ewe ya maro kufa tulabate Ali mujukire Ali ori ati atina wawa alabika na ina afuka kalifa now once the Muslim armies had conquered the Arabian Peninsula they did not stop raiding and attacking people uliriza ne wakuba deba ama liriza neba wamba ama tuale gonage Arabia atete bako mao they were able very rapidly to conquer North Africa. Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Armenia, and in many other territories. So here is a map that shows this red is the part that was Muslim during Muhammad's life. Under the rule of the, those first four caliphs, they were able to conquer all of this yellow. Within a hundred twenty years, they were able to then add also all of this green. Ngawaiseo e miaka chikumi mwabili baso bulu kwedi ze chitundu eche eche magri buecho nebacho nebacho wamba Now, why were the Muslim armies so successful in conquering so much territory so quickly? Echi wuzo chidja jetuli luwachi bana basadja bayi sabu isa muka mchisiru buluwe balu mba ngangaba wamba buluwe balu mba ngangaba dizao ngabatu ala luwachi there are several reasons for this that we'll mention briefly. This area right here was under the control of the Persian Empire. The purple was the Christian Byzantine Empire. Um, do we have we have Uganda even on this map I'm thinking right Uganda down here just there yes yeah. Yeah. Mm. so for many hundreds of years the Persian Empire and the Byzantine Empire had been at war with each other Aba perusi negali ama wanga wanga agenja uru batu kange chisira ni baba angabalu wana gana. Their armies were exhausted from all the fighting. Ere ntalo zinokuma nyanti zari nyingi okutuka kuchigera nti naba luanyi batu kane baulirangi ntalo bazikoye na tebache agala kuruana. So by the time the Muslim armies arrived these, these armies were very weak. The second reason was the black plague. And the black plague was carried by fleas that lived on rats. Uliriza, 
Ah, ono kaumpuli ya vawa. Ya vanga kuhusuela zinezali zidu sowe zali zifude ku, kumese. Yobe zali zifude. Nenga zifude chiruadi. In the years just before the Muslim armies arrived. Emiake jie yongira yongira angaba siramba notiba naba kutuka. The black plague had, oops, sorry. The black plague had killed uh, up to one third of the population ah. of the Byzantine Empire. Wuliri za wanyamu ni basebo. E chiruate chino chiva isa chika umpuli e chidu gavwejo. E miyake jia basira munga tebana wakutu ukao. Jari, jari chise, chimuchi akusatu kumantu avali matuwa alago. Aga waguru guru awe tulabi yaba krista yuvali wafuga. Even those who didn't die that survived were still ill and weak. Now the rats needed food and so the rats lived in towns and villages where people lived. And so the black plague did not impact the Arabs. There's one more reason and it's an important lesson for us today. Within Christianity at this time, there was a huge theological fight. This fight was over the nature of Jesus. There were two views that were in dire opposition to each other. One view held that Jesus did not really have a human nature but only a divine nature. The other view held that Jesus had two natures, human and divine. In the capital city, among the, the church and the church leaders, they all believed in the dual nature of Jesus. In the little towns and villages in remote areas, they believed Jesus only had one nature, the divine nature. The church authorities persecuted these people in the towns and villages who only believed in the one nature of Jesus. So when the Muslim armies came, these people who lived in villages saw them as liberators
And they saw that the Muslims could protect them from the persecution by the church. And Today, all of Christianity all over the world believes in the two natures of Jesus. Most of us don't know that we are simply inheriting that view from these church authorities from many, many, many centuries ago. So we believe this way because the people believing in two natures eventually won the argument with the people who only believed in one nature. So what is the lesson for us today? We cannot allow theological differences to cause us to be separated. conclusions. The church should be unified even if we don't agree on every point of doctrine. When we are divided, we are weaker. Okay, we have now finished the history and development of Islam. We're going to start with the five pillars of Islam. So the five pillars of Islam are the declaration of faith ritual prayer alms giving or charity fasting and the pilgrimage to Mecca. Every Muslim must believe that all five of these pillars are mandatory. They may not actually practice them all, but they must believe that they are mandatory. So the first pillar we're going to look at is the declaration of faith. Declaration of faith. In Arabic, this is called the Shahada. Shahada. 
To become a Muslim, all you have to do is with intention of heart state this declaration. In Arabic, um, you have to state it in Arabic for it to be effective. In English, the declaration is there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. So if you don't speak Arabic and you want to convert to Islam you must say it in your native language but you must also say it in Arabic. In Arabic, it goes like this. You don't have no point in translating this. Okay, Murwalabu Bachu Girabati. La ilaha illa Allah wa Muhammad Rasulallah. That's the Arabic. <laughs> but I did not say it with intention of heart. Since I didn't mean it, I, I didn't become a Muslim. Okay, we have a video of a young woman saying the shahara and becoming a muslim twina akatambi akomwana omwala nga atola shahadu ne namalizanga afuso muslim okay so let's move on to the second uh, there it is ritual prayer tugenze kati kukusaba kuli okwenono kusaba kusaba kwabwe obo kusala so the the ritual prayer is conducted 5 times a day okusala kuno Basala emirundi etano bulirunaku. And this prayer is done exactly the same way all five times each day. Eresale no baino kujikola, baino kujikolo woku jatula, munga weba jatu de emirundi etano no jimala yungu yatu le sale yo. And the Muslim performs the ritual prayer to gain credit as a good work. Luachi basale sale zuze basala basala basobola kubanga bafuna obubonero obo kubanti bakoze omulimo omulungi It is not communication with God like we understand prayer Uliriza bano boba abagala bubonero basala kufuna bubonero nti bayina omulimo omulungi go bakoze na yete kuba kuogereganya na katonda ngafe wetukola no kulokuogereganya ni katonda ya kutonda So Muslims believe at the judgment when after we're dead and we stand at the judgment, our good deeds and bad deeds will be weighed against one another. So one of the most important good works you can do is this ritual prayer. The prayer time each day changes by a few minutes. Each of these five times changes by a few minutes based upon the position of the sun in the sky. Kuchuka, kuchuka mukobu da chika angabu tono tono sibu unji. Nengabu sinzido wa wawe sigami. Kumusana wawe guli. Oba location yu musana wawe guli saa wezu. When it's time to pray, a, uh, the call to prayer is broadcast from the minaret of the mosque. Eda uliriza, bwechiba angachisera chia kusala. 
Oyo seka Oba vera kuchizindaro Ayazina Ngatege zaba jama Neva sheka tiono wawa chibaba Gundi wanajibali Ntibude wakusala uh, See if you can play this video Gezakola buba Akatambia kusoboro kazanya in the early years of Islam, this would be uh, sung out by a man in the top of the minaret. You know, the tower that goes with the mosque. So in the modern era, the man does not go up into the minaret to make the call to prayer. It's pre-recorded and it's broadcast over loudspeakers. Edda, umutoni mioyo yali ya yazina anga, ye ya yazina anga anga yambuka wakuru eri mkarongo teri na yazina. Neka chorua liru, babi likodi inga, bili likode diye vivigambu. Kati baza nyabu za nyawari eri chuchu hii. So I used to live in the United Arab Emirates. Navera koko United Arab Emirates. And from my apartment, I could see seven or eight mosques. Na labira anga dala emiziki tiaje njia ulo jona jona anga jiri skata dolova. When the time for the call to prayer came, each mosque broadcast the call to prayer from their loudspeakers. So I could hear the call to prayer from seven or eight mosques. Kati naringa nsovolo kuulira okuazi inoku kufaku mizikiti nga musamvu tumunana. The problem was that each mosque did not press the play button on the recording at exactly the same time. So the sound of the call to prayer was just a huge noise. Kati ouli da kerere ono gatani ka gatani koko azina ngo kuazina kuliyao kuli confused. Okay, um, before you do the prayer, you have to be in a state of ritual cleanliness. Ngatonda wa kugenda kola kuvaita kusala. Chali chikugwani dokuvanga gori muro chikugwani ra okuvanga gori muro ngofu. Now this doesn't mean clean from dirt it's a sort of a religious cleanness kuno sigamanti oli mulongo fo kuva mulongo funo bo buchafu ne kuno kuba kulongo sewa kuno kwechi na dini so all of the islamic rituals must be done in this state of rich, ritual cleanliness or they don't count as a good work for you so you have to do all the rituals in this clean state or they don't count as a good work. Iranga chari chikugwani dokuvanga wero ngosa. Munongo seo ye nini nini nga wera ambikidwa. Singate wero ngosa no funa uzu. No kola uzu. No wero ngosa. Mungeri joina kwero ngosa. Chite geza gobato toita o gobato saani de. Can you go back to the prior video of the shahada if we have it now? Yes, right here. Uh, today, a new sister that she's making her shahada. What's your name, sister? Shannon. Shannon. Uh, Shannon, can you tell us just a little bit how did you start to know about Islam? Um, well, um, I had a, a friend, mm -hmm. really close friend, and um, that's how I learned. Oh, that's good. I never knew any Muslims. I, before now. Yeah, I, I remember I met I her, by the way, before Islam. So I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to say a few words in Arabic and I want you just to repeat after me. The first thing I want to say, La, La, Ilaha, Ilaha. I want you to put your finger like this as you are Tawheed, that means that there is only one God. La, Ilaha, La, Ilaha, Illallah, Illallah, Muhammadun, Muhammadun, Rasul, 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 Allah, Allah. That means that there is no God but only one God. 
You can There's say. no God but only one God. And Muhammad is his last messenger. And Muhammad, Muhammad is his last messenger. And also you believe in Jesus Christ as he is a messenger of God. I also believe in Jesus Christ and that he is a messenger of God. All right, takbir. Allah <laughs> takbir. Allah Mubarak. <laughs> Congratulations for your new Islam. That's What's takbir? Takbir means like saying Allah Akbar means God is the greatest. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if anybody would like to say salam for her and, uh, and congratulate her for the new Islam, now you are one of our, the sisters of Islam, mashallah. I'm very proud of you. What's the shahada? Shahada means that you are witnessing. That means witnessing. Declaration of the. Okay, so the part about, and Jesus is also a messenger of Allah, that is not a part of the shahada. They just added that. Because Akubaku. she's. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, He's better than me, huh? Okay, we get the idea. That's good. <laughs> it goes on several minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so we have this ritual washing. And the washing is strictly regulated by rules. Can you go to the next slide, please? Oh, well, before we do this, uh, this is a picture of a washing station where you would do the ritual washing. Every mosque has these. Next one. Okay, this is a video that's going to teach you how to do the washing. لنحس في أعماقنا أعماقنا الإيمان كم من فؤاد كالحجارة قسمة فإذا وعد القرآن حين This video will teach you the basics of wudu, ablution, and salat prayer. Wudu is the purification of the body made before prayer. It is required before prayer if one of the following has occurred. Breaking wind, going to the toilet, deep sleep, significant bleeding, or sexual activity. In the case of sexual discharge, ghusl, full body ablution is required. As a mercy from Allah, a woman experiencing her menstrual cycle should not pray during this time. The intention for purification must be made from the heart and we begin wudu by saying Bismillah The hands must be washed first from the tips of the fingers to the wrist and this is done three times from the right hand repeating the process for the left hand Then 
Then wash your mouth and nose with your right hand, ensuring water enters both your mouth and your nose. And then clean your nose with your left hand. Repeat the process three times. Then wash your face from your forehead to your chin, including running your fingers through your beard if you have one. Repeat the process three times. Then you wash your arms from the tips of your fingers to just above your elbow. Three times for the right arm. Repeating the process three times for the left arm. Wet your hands and shake them from excess water and run your hands through your hair forwards and backwards, beginning from your forehead to the back of your head to the forehead again. Clean your ears from the inside to the outside. Then we clean our feet from the tips of our toes to just above our ankles. Clean your feet from your toes first using your hand in between each toe right to left. Then clean your feet three times. Repeat the process for your left foot using your left hand. We finish wudu by saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh اللهم اجعلني من التوابين واجعلني من المتطهرين Can you imagine you have to do that 5 times a day If you do not do it in the proper order It doesn't count Uliriza ukibate kikirizi duba bate bakibaze If you do the prayer without first doing the washing, the prayer does not count. You have to do this if you are impure for any reason. Do you remember the five things that make you impure? If you we have we have nice ways of saying this uh, breaking wind passing gas yes uh, I, I don't know how you say this nicely okay if you if you do this you are impure and you must do the washing Singa chikuzuri wanokuata katima uliza abade ya kavayo mukusala chitegeza toli mulongo fu wino kudayo no naba if you wash ogeza singo sangi dos ofunye uzu and then you are walking to the prayer room to do the prayer wakati ya wo mukutambula jukile binabirobera walako wakati ya wo mukutambula wo ngogenda kusala and you do this Then you have to start over with the washing again. Okay. Since we're having so much fun with this. I will tell you that there are rules about the exact nature of how this happens whether it makes you defiled or not. Uliza 
Elaka ahumuruachi mzese. Neka ambalage. Wali we nkola jiba ino kujita mboba wakwata katimako. Nti wakwa atako mungeri ya mwobe ndala. Ti nzo kufuro mlongo fuba toli mlongo. Baine nkola ya awi. Tomalaga furumia. Utude wakati yao no kurotia. Aa. Baine nkola. If there's no sound and no smell, you're okay. Nkola ilieti. Ndi waba angatemufu demu. Ulira. Kalobo zika fudeyo. Nganechi fundu techi fudeyo. Chitegeza. Gocha li mlongo fu. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I am not making this up. Bambi siri bido sibi gira bugizinti mbasesa neda wechi to wechiri. The second thing was if you use the toilet. E choku bidi singa ogenda mu tula wechi sose kwa takatima. Chechuku furo butali murongo. E choku bidi kasto ogenda e in places of convenience no ogenda mu toy or no ogenda juko zesa. Another one was deep sleep. Echo kusatu kwekwe bakanyo no buliza ko. Sexual activity. Echo kuna kwekuba kumuntu goega sena e no gena mkwega ta. Or major bleeding. Oba umuntu nga tugambe a ugenze monsonga. So any of these things defile you making it necessary that you do the washing. Kati e yoyo ne vita nongare tu vidabi singo sangi mwanga o o genze monsonga songa wezi tio kute katima o weva senyo no buliza konyo e vintu tu wevi tio wano gende manju biku biku le tiro kubanga o dayo no naaba e minuni e jisuba ne jisuba ne moeta ano. Prayer is conducted in the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca, known as the Qibla. It's conducted in units that are repeated called rakat. Each prayer has a specific number of rakat. It is an obligation for Muslims to pray five times a day. The five prayers are as follows. Fajr, the morning prayer, which is conducted before sunrise. It consists of two rakat, both of which must be recited aloud. Dhuhr, the midday prayer. It consists of four rakat, all of which are to be recited silently. Asr, the afternoon prayer, consists of four rakat, all of which are to be recited silently. Maghrib, which is conducted immediately after sunset, consists of three rakat, two of which are to be recited aloud, one silently, and Aisha, the night prayer, which consists of four rakat, two of which are to be recited aloud, and two are recited silently. We begin salat by first making the intention from the heart to pray to Allah. Before we begin prayer, there are some points to bear in mind. Men and women pray exactly the same and appropriate clothing should be worn. The distance between your shoulders should be the same as the distance between your feet. Your eyes should be fixed upon the point of prostration at all times. During Rakua, ensure your back is straight. During sajda, your forehead and nose should be touching the floor at all times and your feet should be together. Whilst in a state of tashahud, sit on your left foot and curl your right foot. While looking at your right finger. Okay, so one thing I, I wanted to mention from the first video on the wudu, it says that women, when you're having your menstrual cycle, you cannot pray. I have a question. Now, whenever after doing the wuzu or after washing yourself, you are the one going to, to lead the prayers in the mosque and we are human beings. Supposing the stomach disturbs and you are the one leading the prayer, what happens? That's one. Two, in elementary book of the Muslims I used to have, they say even if you are satisfied, too satisfied, you're not supposed to go to, to pray. Too satisfied from eating? He was saying that if at all you are the lead 
the one leading the, the those people who are leading them into prayers then all of a sudden you feel not okay in the stomach then you know what I'm happens? sure there is some rule about that but I don't know what that rule is so um I forgot the second question. If somebody is over satisfied, is it okay? Yes, I have not read or heard anything about uh, being overly satisfied with food having any impact on the prayer. So in Islam, when the woman is having her period, she is unclean. And so if you do a washing it doesn't help because you still remain unclean. Elamu Islam umchara singa asangi wanga ali munsonga ne wa mugende lina akola wuzu kitegeza tajja kutukula era bajja kusigalanga achali nga simulongof. And so already you see that women are at a disadvantage in the accumulation of good good works. Era kati wanu tuchiraba bokubanga okusala emirundi eje etano nga che chimu chigendo kuya mukubanga oyina ebibale ebirunjo be bikoro ebirunje eri eri alla kati ataba chala bo baba bali sema bega bayo batuka musongezo aba ebyo kusala tajja kubanga afuna obonero because you miss out on the credits that the prayers bring for approximately one week every month kubanga bo chibanga mchala yinge na musongo kugeza abamu bamalayo wiki namba ah uh, ukuba kubanga akunganya obubonero byawe byakunganya obubonero kusala kwa kunganya obubonero obubonero abajja kuba vide mwao wa wiki namba ngo butabufunye now the muslim will tell you oh no 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 this is merciful by allah toward the woman era baba salam bo ba sungu batunuza mu nsonge bajja ga nti allah wa kisanyo nyini dala eri abachala I fail to see how it's merciful to me it seems like a burden. Kati nganze we ntunulo obulunji ndabira dalanti guno mugugugwe nyinyi nyinyi okuba kutekedwa ku bachala tiwaba kisache nyinyi wadde. Men and women pray in separate locations. Era abakazi nabasajja tebasabira mu kifo kye kimu baba awula baba teka wo chikati ne chiba awula. The women will always be behind the men. Ile bisere bisinga ubabikisera kyo nawe enkola yebwe to kweli abachala baba tekeli emabega abami babere no maso There's two reasons for this Ensonga ze zino nazo zitegere one that the Muslims will tell you about and one that they will not tell you about Ensonga zili bibi esoka abayisira mbajja jikubulirako eyo kubi eyo tebasobola jikubulira naye jiwigerero the reason that they tell you about makes good sense. Let's suppose I'm in prayer and there's a woman in front of me. And it comes time to do the prostration I have a woman in front of me with her back end right in my face. This can be distracting for a man. So the Muslim will rightly say we are there to focus on God not on the woman in front of us. But there's another reason they will not tell you. In the mosque, uh, there is a place in the front called the Qibla. The Qibla 
is the directional marker that points the way to the Kaaba in Mecca. Gibla eno obe kifo kino kibaise gibla che kifo ekyolekedde obe kisonge de dala dala e Mecca eri gitulabi ye Saudi Arabia ba mu Kaaba. The prayer must be done facing Mecca or it does not count. Chigambibwa oba we kiri che nyini okusaba kwa kwa buli muslimu konna kwino kubanga kusalibwa nenga kuolekezeddwa eri Mecca kubanga singa tokuolekeza Mecca kubate kujja kubanga kuitamu. So if I'm supposed to face this way but instead I'm facing this way my prayer does not count. Ogeza singa mba nino kubanga antunude eno nene nchuka muko katini nemba nga antunude wano we wati okusaba ko kubate kuyisemu. So this qibla is very important. Kati uliriza banyabo ne basebo qibleyo ya mugaso. Muhammad said Muhammad yagamba bwati that between the man who is praying and the qibla nti wakati titi wo musajjo yo bo muntu yenali mukusaba bo musajja imkusala ne qibleyo if a dog or a donkey or a woman passes in front of the man between him and the qibla the man's prayer is cancelled ndi singa wakati ya wonga ali mukusala embwa obe ndogoyi obo omuchala yenna na malirizanga asaze bwati okusala okukuba kufu era kubate kugenda kuyita mu tekubalirwa so if we all pray together and there's a woman in front of me my prayer is automatically cancelled kati ndi singa kuba kusala nengo omchala ya kuli maso kitegeza okusaba oko tekuyita mu kubate kubalirwa therefore the woman has to be behind me kati nga chigamba obanga bagamba ndi omuchala ina kubera baina kutube baina kubera mabega wa basajja era bateka uno gukatini nabiri mabega wa basajje so when muhammad said this about the dog the donkey and the woman aisha his wife said you have made us women the equivalent of donkeys and dogs kati uliriza ndi nabi muhammad Boya yatu le bigambe binagamba anti singo omuchala yenno banga kuli maso oba endogo yi oba tugambe anti embwa omuchala nagamba muchala we nagandi ekitegeza otuddide no twenkanya nkanya ne embwa ne endogo yi twenk tuli kulevo ya mwana ndogo yi So do you remember in the video it said that you're supposed to look at your right finger Mujukire anti mukali akatambi tulabye akagaluka na akamwe kati oyino katunulira boti walingo ofukami de boti no tunulira akagalukan Muhammad said if during the prayer you look up you will become blind Era Muhammad bwati wa yongero balimba nanga amanti wakati mu kusala oko ne kakutanda no tunula boti wa gurujukira batunulira lugalo runo ku mukono gwa abiguno gwe kono nga tuli dechi no kuguru kuno kuno kwa kono agamanti oyino kubanga amasoko gono gateko ko tunula waguru ja kuziba amaso Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and play that third video. Katugende maso tuzanyia katambi ya kokusatu. Okay, he asked the question, what if there's no water? Musumba buze kibuzo abali mudungu, teri mazi. How do you do the the washing? Ufunoti ya wuzu. This is a great question because Islam was born in the desert. Chiro kibuzo kinyuvu kubanga obisiram tubulaba anti buzali wa eri mu mudungu. So the answer is you use clean dirt. Ah, ekyo kudamu kirindi. Yes. Okozesa ah tugambuba enfufu eye enu enongo fo ben enu enunji. So there are all kinds of rules and regulations about what dirt is clean and what dirt is dirty. Era waliwo amateka agagamba nti enfufu eyo waliwo enfufu enongofu ne enfufu echi eyo enchafu. Now I cannot imagine washing my face and my hair and my ears with dirt. Kale rooza no yo no naza obwenyi bo no kwata ne matu no isako ne mutwe wamune emikono jino ne bigere ne ngo na and yes in your nose and your mouth too it's na kama no isako ne munyindo ne ngo ko zamfufu but this these rules are provided for in islam uliriza bino uteka teko babuteka wo nenga babiteka wo ngabya abachi islam 
But in today's world, there, it's almost never the case that there's not some water. Okay, let's do this last video, the third video. We begin Salat by first making the intention from the heart to pray to Allah. Now we will begin the prayer. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmid Deen. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر رب اغفر لي الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر okay, بسم you, الله you الرحمن الرحيم so we showed one repetition one rakat you remember that each of the five prayers has a different number of repetitions. Two, three, or four. And each repetition uh, you say all of those words in Arabic. If you don't know Arabic, you memorize the sounds. And some of the repetitions you say this aloud and some you just think it silently. Ebimu kati kubine byokudingana